Thank you, Rice, for sponsoring today's video and increasing our productivity. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If you think that the past few months I've been dreading to use a base model MacBook Pro, well, you're totally right. You see, after using a mid-tier spec, I kept thinking, is this even worth the price for most people? And to be honest, it just isn't. But before I give you guys a proper review of this thing, I thought it would be nice to show you how I set up most of my MacBooks, whether that's for productivity, dev, editing, or even simple everyday to day tasks. And so this is how everything starts for me. After going through the entire setup, the very first thing I like to do is to disable the boot on the lid open. This is just super simple because all you need to do is go on your terminal and type sudo nvram auto boot equals percentage zero zero. I've just never been a fan of having my MacBook turn on every time I open the lid. I just rather use their new power button, which is so much better than last gen. Regardless, for me, the basics are simple. Starting off by replacing the wallpaper with something I like, like all years or Canoopsie's wallpapers, for example. I then always make sure I am on the latest stable Mac OS and I I typically uncheck the automatically keep my Mac up to date. I always read articles about the latest OS updates to make sure things are stable before going through with the update. I then always proceed to cleaning up the dock completely to remove all the unwanted apps and try my best to make things look minimal by always adjusting the size of the dock within your settings as well as the magnification which I've always enjoyed on Mac OS. Oh yes, don't worry, I like keeping my dock at the bottom. By the way, within the same dock and menu bar settings, scroll all the way to the battery and make sure you show your battery percentages. This just avoids you having to hover on the battery icon to check your battery status. For the desktop, I like stacking my files. The feature is actually super useful because if you're a mess like me, this will simply combine all the similar files together so you don't need to combine them manually. I do wish I could set everything up to control things with my new Apple Watch, but before opening it up, would you guys want to see an Apple Watch review? Leave a hashtag watch down below. Now, if this is your main laptop, please do enable your firewall. This feature does come disabled by default, and if I had to explain this to myself like I was five, well, basically, it's a feature that establishes a barrier between a trusted network and an untrusted network like the internet. And for the sake of your eyes, guys, please use dark mode. I typically like to pair this with an orange theme to match the aesthetics of my channel, and at the bottom, I always check the show scroll bars box. Super useful in Finder, which we will get back to later. Just because, for me, before doing anything else, I like my default browser to be Chrome. Don't get me wrong, I love Safari, but mostly on iOS and iPadOS. For me, Chrome has been essential because it keeps the bulk of my online history and data within my email profile, and it's great for development. Chrome is where most of my web browsing happens, and it's where I download most apps. For starters, if you are a productivity freak like me, I suggest you give Rise a try. Rise is a desktop app that automatically tracks and categorizes the time you spend on certain websites and apps, which you can imagine as to why I like downloading this off the get-go. It helps you understand where your time is being spent with the help of some analytics and insights so you can improve your focus and build better work habits. I am someone that likes to track their days and activities because it makes me decide which tasks I want to work on next. And so for me, being aware of how I spend my time is essential to get work done. But Rice just makes things super easy within their dashboard. 
Not only it is able to intelligently track my app use within the background, but it's able to categorize my workflow by letting me know what I tend to do the most. I do get distracted on YouTube when watching car videos and that clearly shows within the entertainment category, but the big picture can always be seen within the timeline. If you step away from the computer for more than five minutes, the app can track time for you and that's where these black blocks appear. The rest simply shows time being spent on the computer, whether that's focusing on work, meetings, and so on. I do like tagging sessions with a project tag so I know how much time I've spent doing a particular thing, such as coding. The app overall makes it super easy to visualize how your day was spent and I totally recommend checking out the link down below and use my code Andres Vidoza to be the first thousand people to get 25% off your first three months with Rise. I really suggest maximizing your productivity within your new MacBook. Just don't forget that Rise additionally provides a 14-day free trial so that you can test out the product before buying. Rise leads me to the fact that productivity-wise, the first app I enjoy using is Notion. Notion is the number one work tool we use in the office and I often like using it in dark mode. With this, I recently heavily started using Paste as my clipboard manager to make copy and pasting super easy for me even when doing some development work. But as someone that enjoys using alarm clocks for reminders, I do heavily recommend you download and use Gestimer. It makes things super easy from the get-go in order to be able to set reminders, like for example, posting on Instagram. Regardless, now that M1 fully supports Office 365 apps, I usually always download those, but most importantly, Adobe Acrobat for PDFs. Just because I constantly find myself signing contracts, whether that's for the new car we got or new sponsorships for the channel. And when it comes to managing your MacBook's temperature and overall system health, I like using TG Pro for this, which lives on my menu bar, as well as Clean My Mac, which takes care of junk, malware, and makes your Mac faster and more organized. It's just an extra layer of protection for the firewall we enabled prior. I don't like having all of these apps stacked within the dock, so I typically always use the trackpad to go within the launchpad and drag and drop the apps that I heavily need to physically click on all the time. But the dock for me always starts with Finder and productivity apps. When it comes to Finder, there are a few essential tips I've got for you. First of all, Snap to Grid is the number one thing you should do to avoid having your apps floating within your folders. This allows you to have a proper grid and organize everything neatly. Second, the left column here is key. Within your Finder's preference settings, I recommend you enable and disable a few folders to make things clean and most importantly, organize them the way you want them on the sidebar. Oh, and developers, you might want to enable that user's home root folder and create your developer folder in there. Yes, it's an actual thing and it keeps things super clean. Just like the fact that adding the path bar and status bar within your view settings is just as great. Very much recommended just because they both allow you to travel faster within your folders and view their current content. Now, when it comes to default apps, make sure you set these up by clicking right click on the trackpad, click on the get info and head to open with where you can choose your default app to open things such as PDF files and so on. Also, when opening up Finder, I don't particularly like being redirected to my most recent files, so I always find myself heading to the root folder. I also do hate using tabs within Finder because I drag and drop a lot within Windows, but most importantly, I strongly recommend you check the hard disk option so it shows your desktop so you can allow yourself to access that part of your laptop without having to use the terminal. And please, for the love of God, do yourself a favor and when performing a search, search the current folder first. With all of this being said, you see this case here? Well, I don't really need it. Mainly because I always turn off document syncing within my iCloud Drive options. The only thing I truly find myself backing up is code because the rest lives within my NAS. This is where for me, setting up my development tools is important. It all starts with browsing the net, installing Homebrew by copying their command to my clipboard and pasting it within the terminal. It all takes a while, but eventually to be able to use it, all you need to do is update your path by running these two commands. With this, you can install Git, install Node and install iTerm2 with Homebrew Cast to obtain the UI. iTerm2 is my terminal of choice and I like to pair it up with OMICSH and Power Level 10K. Usually, it takes me about 10 minutes to go through the whole setup, but essentially it allows me to have a more complete terminal for better branch reference and overall more information about pretty much anything. You can add a lot of cool little custom prompt icons such as RAM, 
battery info, Wi-Fi status, and more. At this point, I usually love tweaking the appearing settings with an item too, and honestly, I recommend sticking to a transparent dark theme, but it's your choice. Before downloading VS Code, I always set up my GitHub account to make sure my MacBook has proper access. I always do this with the help of an SSH key that needs to be generated within the terminal. You just need to let the computer know we want to use this key by starting the SSH agent and finally adding the key. Then simply copy this by using pbcopy along with the keys path and head to your GitHub account settings under the SSH and CPG keys settings and paste it in there. Overall, this will allow you to clone projects and create repos without having to enter your credentials all the time. With this setup, it's easy for me to get things going on VS Code, but just make sure that once that's installed, you install the code command within your path just so you can open files within your terminal using VS Code. I always proceed to log into VS Code with my GitHub account in order to have my extensions installed and my new favorite color theme which is the GitHub theme. While all of this goes on, I do leave Xcode downloading since it's such a huge app and takes time to install. Regardless, I find myself installing Docker, Postman for testing APIs, and I also recently started using Nummy for quick calculations before coding stuff. At this point in time, I usually get a feel for the trackpad, but I overall recommend the following. Within your system preference, head to trackpad and adjust the tracking speed. The 14-inch MacBook has such a big and great trackpad, but to make sure you don't run out of runway when drag and dropping, increase that tracking speed. I do like disabling tap to click since I enjoy the haptic feedback this delivers by physically tapping on it. A little tip I have for you is that if you head to your accessibility settings, right where it says pointer control, you can enable dragging with three fingers. This overall makes it super easy to drag anything without having to physically click on the trackpad. Overall, when it comes to the rest, this is how I like my trackpad to be set up. However, a little trick I recently started using with it is hot corners. If you guys go to mission control and you click hot corners in the bottom left corner, you can set up the four corners of your MacBook to do specific user instructions like show your desktop, show your launchpad, reveal mission control, and even put the display to sleep. When revealing the launchpad, I typically like to organize my apps as I have them on my phone. I strongly recommend doing this to avoid yourself from getting lost, which then allows me to install the rest of the apps I need, such as Premiere Pro, Lightroom Classic, and Photoshop. Thanks to my NAS and my Finder setup, I can easily access the files I need such as fonts, LUTs, and presets for my apps. I always recommend having a NAS because it typically allows you to keep the essentials in one space and makes your editing setup a lot easier when it comes to setting up a new computer. But these three apps never truly need any more setup than that since I like using their default settings. I just got used to their default views ever since I started using Adobe products. Regardless of all of this, I do want to share some more tips and tricks for those who are new to macOS. One thing that grinds my gears is the notifications we get for everything, even connecting a USB drive. If you go over to notifications, you can tweak each app and disable what exactly you want to be unnotified of. For me, the only thing I want to receive notifications for are my emails, not texts because that's what my phone is for. Also, widgets are super useful, I highly recommend those. Just like the iPhone, you can add all the cool little widgets you need here like the weather, calendar, clock, and so on. Also, get used to using the command center, which is very well done. I strongly recommend using it because in here you can modify settings for things such as AirDrop, your Bluetooth devices, focus for an optimal workflow, and even your keyboard brightness. Plus, if you ever want to record your screen or yourself, you can use QuickTime to do so. No need to download a separate app for it. In fact, it was the tool I heavily used back when I was doing some coding tutorials. Finally, to save you some time, I recommend using the trash shortcuts, which go like this. Command delete to delete the file selected and command shift delete to empty the trash. Very useful just like the fact that command space will reveal spotlight search, you know, so you can search better throughout your whole system. As for the system itself, I am very happy to be the owner of a base model MacBook Pro 14 inch for my everyday use. I am going to be making an overall review video in the future, but I think for 90% of people, this is the best laptop out there. I hope this video was useful and you enjoyed watching me setting up this beautiful beast. There's still a lot I need to test out, but if you want a long-term review, leave a hashtag long-term. I'm signing out. Take care.